Okay, tonight's topic is incremental analysis. Now, we've talked about this course being a course of tools and techniques that managers use to help them plan, to help them control and operations, and also to, to make help them make relevant decisions. Of course, a good decision is one that leaves the company better off. You are adding value to the company. So the decision-making process, a few steps involved here. One that is very important is to make sure you identify the problem properly. Now, if you have a problem, that means you are faced with alternatives different ways of solving that problem. And so the second step is to determine what those courses of action are and to evaluate them. And the in incremental analysis tool helps you evaluate the different courses of action. Then you make a decision and then you review the results of your decision. So. Those are the basic steps in decision making. Now, incremental analysis. Because business decisions involve a choice among alternative courses of action, you always have a course, uh, two choices. One, do something. Two, do Both of those are uh, alternatives that you can explore. But in making the decision, you must analyze each alternative, considering both financial and non-financial information. Now, non-financial information is qualitative data. Qualitative data means these are points that you value, and people have different values, and therefore would have different qualitative points. So in this course, we cannot, I cannot even teach you the non-financial. That is up to you. What we're talking about here is analyzing the alternatives on a financial basis. And in that way, we can frame these alternatives. And then you can bring in the non-financial information based on that. So the process here in incremental analysis is to identify the financial data for each alternative, but you don't have to focus on the financial, all the financial data of each alternative. You focus only on that data that is different between the alternatives. That is called incremental analysis. It's also called differential analysis because you're focusing on the data that is different between the alternatives. It's also called relevant analysis or relevant costing. All those terms mean the same thing here in terms of incremental analysis. Incremental analysis includes the probable effect on future earnings. Of course, we look at the effect on the earnings of each alternative, and we choose the alternative that leaves us better off. Now, we are bringing in here estimates. So there's a level of uncertainty regarding some of that financial data. Because we're making a decision, we're making, we're choosing between possible courses of action in the future. So you see all the data we are using are estimated. They're based on past data, but they're estimates. We also bring in a lot of other data other than accounting data. We might involve market analysis. We bring in engineers. What do they think about this? And so on. But we focus on both costs and revenues. That is the costs and revenues that are different between the alternatives. Sometimes variable costs, which you think might be changed between alternatives, are not relevant. 
OK, they do not change under the course of it. Fixed cost, which you may think don't change, but they may be relevant because this alternative involves an additional fixed cost. So the key here is not to focus on costs and think in terms of variable costs and think in terms of fixed costs and think in terms of revenue. What you should be thinking of is cash. Cash flow. Cash inflow instead of revenues, look at the cash inflow for each alternative. And instead of costs, look and focus on the cash outflow between each alternative. So it has to be cash. Not only that, it has to be future cash. So the relevant data that you need is, quote, future cash flows different between the alternatives. That's where you focus, future cash flows. Identify the alternatives, and then look at the cash flows, inflows and outflows. So let's begin now. Sign up for the quick quiz. Come on, we need more than seven. Come on, 17. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right. That's all we're going to get tonight. That's all we're going to get. I guess. No, we just lost one. I had eight. Come on, give me back eight and we'll start the quiz. Oh, uh, well, we can't be here all night. Okay, quiz question one. Major accounting contribution to management decision making process is evaluating possible courses of action is to sign responsibility, provide relevant revenue and cost data about each course of action, determine the amount of money that should be spent on a project. Answer good. Yes, of course. Relevant means that it is a future cash flow and it's different between alternatives. Question two. Process of evaluating financial data that change under alternative course of action is called. Right, good. And everybody got it, good. Question three. Incremental analysis is most useful. Everybody answered no. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. OK, let's continue. Here's an example, a basic approach in incremental analysis. And that approach is illustrated here. We have alternative A and alternative B. Now, alternative A has cash in of 125,000 and cash out of 100,000. So net cash flow of positive 25,000. Alternative B has cash in of 110, cash out of 80, and a net cash positive flow of 30,000. Well, basically what we do now is we focus on the difference. So we take the cash in, and the cash in is a difference of 15,000, okay? And we're showing that as a decrease for alternative B, we're looking at B in relation to A. So alternative B has a cash inflow negative 15,000. Now we look at cash outflow. 
and cash outflow difference is positive. They have a better cash outflow, 20,000. So you see the net cash flow is 5,000. You could have seen that when you just looked at net income, 25 and alternative and 30. But basically that's the process. You focus on the difference. In this example, alternative B is compared to alternative A. The net income column shows the difference. And that is that there's 5,000 more. We would be better off with alternative B because our five uh, profit would go up by 5,000. Okay. So that's the basic approach, incremental analysis. Now there are different situations uh, in business that management face that we use incremental analysis. Now there are six of them listed here, but we're gonna focus on number one, accept an order at a special price, and number two, make or buy. Number three is more of an accounting uh, thing, whether we sell off now or we process something further. That's a question in cost accounting. Managers themselves on a daily basis does, do not face that problem. But they do face the problem, do I keep this piece of equipment, retain it, or replace it? Okay. And senior management sometimes looks at the different business segments in the business and they are faced with the question, do we eliminate? an unprofitable business segment. So that too, we will be looking at. The last one is the allocation of limited resources. That's more of an engineering type decision. We're gonna focus on one, two, four, and five. So let's start. This is whether or not to accept a special order at a special price. Sometimes a company has an opportunity to obtain additional business if it's willing to make major price concessions to a specific customer. An order at a special price should be accepted by the company if the incremental cash in from the order exceeds the incremental cash out. Now, we must make some assumptions here. One of them is that uh, it's assumed that the sales in other markets will not be affected. That is, our other customers do not find out about this. If they find out about it, they might just leave us. All right. And the other assumption is we can do this special order because we have excess capacity. We do not have to expand our, our building. We do not have to purchase additional equipment. We can do this order um, within the capabilities that we have now. Okay, for example, let's assume, and I'm an American company, and I'm Sunbelt company that produces 100,000 automatic blenders per month, which is 80% of the plant capacity. So I could still produce uh, another 25,000 here. Variable manufacturing costs to produce these automatic blenders, $8 per unit. Now that's direct material and direct labor and variable overhead variable manufacturing costs. Fixed manufacturing costs, which is the size of the plant and all the equipment, is 400,000 or $4 per unit because we produce 100,000 units. They unitize the fixed cost at $4. Okay, the blenders sell to retailers at $20 each. The problem, Sunbelt's has an offer from Mexican company to purchase an additional 2,000 blenders. Can I do that? Oh yeah, I have the capacity. I'm only at 80%. 2,000 is nothing. 
but they're willing to pay only $11 per unit. Acceptance of this order should not affect normal sales of the product, and the additional units can be manufactured without expanding capacity. Okay, do I do it or don't I do it? Well, when you first look at it, you say, hey, the basic cost to produce this is $12. The order should be rejected because these people are only paying us $11. However, since these units can be produced without expanding capacity, the special order will not increase fixed costs. So you see the fixed cost of $4 is irrelevant because it's the same between if I do the order or I don't do the order. And so my alternatives then is to reject the order, say no, or accept the order. Now, if I reject it, no money comes in or no revenue. And if I reject it, I'm not going to manufacture those 2,000. So there's no money going out for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. And the fixed overhead is irrelevant. Because if I accept the order, there's no additional fixed cost. It's the same, 400,000. But if I accept the order, well, in comes 22,000 in cash and out goes 16,000 in direct material, direct labor and manufacturing over variable manufacturing overhead. So you see, I'd be 6,000 better off. And when you look at the net increase and decrease, the incremental, the cash inflow is 22,000 greater for the accept order than the reject. The cash outflow is 16,000, which is the difference between the two alternatives. The net cash flow is 6,000. So Sunbelt should accept this special order because it will increase profits by 6,000. Any questions? Okay. I have a few. Cypress Corp has excess capacity. Under what circumstances would the company accept a special order less than the current selling price? Yes, of course. When incremental cash inflows exceed incremental incremental means the difference between the reject and the accept cash outflows and that's the answer all right now here is another situation it's just simply called make or buy but today in today's language is whether i should outsource a, the manufacturer of a product or a service that I'm currently doing inside my company, whether I should give that over to another company to produce or to serve. Make means I continue the way I am. Buy means I outsource it. So in the make or buy decision, we only have cost. Right now I'm doing something within the company, it costs me this. If I outsource it, can I get it cheaper? That's the question. But there's an opportunity cost in here, and this is something that you're going to have to be familiar with. That is, if I outsource it, then I have some spare space. I have some spare equipment. I could use that spare space or equipment to earn other revenue. But I can only do that if I do the buy alternative. I can't do that if I do the make alternative. So this becomes what we call an opportunity cost. Another definition of an opportunity cost is the potential benefit that may be obtained. I have this empty space by following 
one of the courses of action, the buy, an alternative course of action. The cost is an additional cost for the make component. Now, a demonstration of that it would be in order. Here we have uh, Baron Company incurs the following annual cost in producing 25,000 ignition switches for motor scooters. Now, to produce the 25,000, they incur 50,000 in direct material. They incur 75,000 in direct labor. They incur 40,000 in variable manufacturing overhead. And they incur 60,000 in fixed manufacturing overhead. Keep in mind that fixed manufacturing overhead is rent and AC and depreciation on the equipment. So they have 220, they currently cost them 225,000 to produce 25,000 ignition switches, which is $9 a switch. Now, Barron can purchase these ignition switches from another company called Ignition Inc. at a price of $8 per unit. What should management do? Well, again, on the surface, it appears that they should buy the switches for $8 instead of making them for $9. However, a review of operations indicates that if the switches are purchased from Barron, variable costs uh, of Barron, variable costs only 10,000, uh, variable costs would be incurred, but only 10,000 of the fixed manufacturing costs will be eliminated. Variable costs will be eliminated and 10,000. Therefore, the overhead costs right now are 60,000. They'll only be 50 if I buy. So if I continue to, to make direct material 50,000, direct labor 75, variable overhead 40, uh, fixed overhead 60. If I buy, I don't have to spend money on direct materials, so it's zero. I don't have to pay the labor. I let them go. I don't have to pay variable overhead because that's all related to the production of the ignition switch. They're all direct costs to the production. But I still have to pay 50000 for that space and the equipment, the depreciation on that, all right? And if I purchase at $8 each, I have to pay 200,000. So you see the buy alternative is actually 250,000. Whereas if I continue the way I am, it's only 225. So obviously I am going to continue to make. If you look at it on an incremental basis, the 50,000 is relevant because it's different between the alternatives, 75 and the 40, and the 10 here, which is the difference between 60 and 50, and of course the cash outflow of 200,000. So you see these are savings up here. This is cash outflow, and the cash outflow are greater than the savings. So no, I would say goodbye Ignition Switch Inc. I'm going to continue manufacturing, okay? Because I cannot get rid of those fixed costs. But what if I could use that extra space and equipment? Well, then I have an opportunity here, but I only have that opportunity if I buy. I've decided not to buy. But assume through buying the switches, Barron can use the released production capacity to generate an additional 28,000. This lost income is an additional cost of continuing to make the switches in the maker buy. So you see this 28,000 is an opportunity cost, which we add, we add it to the make decision because we're not going to get that money if we make. So the cost of making it is that we don't get 28,000.
But when we add it to the make decision, the buy decision now is more favorable. It's 3,000, okay? So that's how we do it financially. Now, at this point, I wanna talk about non-financial data. My profits are gonna go up 3,000, but we're going to be laying off six people in the plant. So is it really worth for Barron Company to lay off six people and outsource this product, production of this product? What about the morale of the other people working there when they see that the company does that for 3,000? So that's one qualitative factor. Another qualitative factor is quality. Ignition 8 is going to bring in ignition switches that we're going to use in our motorcycle. Right now, if we make, we have control of that quality. Is it worth giving up the control of that quality for 3000 and increase in profit? Another issue is timeliness. Right now, the ignition switches are needed to complete the scooters. Well, what if Ignition Inc. is slow in delivering? He holds up all our production. So giving up or outsourcing these ignition switch for a profit of 3000 is uh, questionable. So those are qualitative factors that will come into the decision. And a decision maker might say, no. Although the buy decision has 3000 more in profit, I'm going to continue to make because it's more important to me to maintain quality and timeliness and the morale of my employees. So you see how non-qualitative data quite often trumps, I don't want to use Trump, but is uh, you don't play cards, trumps means is better than uh, the, the make decision and then the financial data, okay? Any question on that? So be sure you understand what an opportunity cost is. Yeah, yeah, very good. New seven, that's good. That's what I'm going to make. Question six. An opportunity cost of alternate course of action is relative to make your Dubai decision is subtracted from the make costs, added to the make costs, or added to the buy costs. Right. Ah, no, no, you add it to the make because you are foregoing revenue if you do the make alternative. So it's a cost. It's revenue you're not going to get. So we call that a cost and it's an opportunity cost. All right. OK, to continue now, this type of decision as a manager, is faced with quite often managers face this decision. They are responsible for equipment and this decision is do I keep this piece of equipment or do I replace it with a new piece of equipment? So what we do is we compare the cost for both alternatives. All right now keep in mind that what we focus on here are future cash flows. So therefore, the book value, the book value is what you paid for the piece of equipment minus accumulated depreciation. That's irrelevant. Why? What you paid for equipment was in the past. And depreciation is not even a cash flow. So you don't even think about, you don't bring in the fact that you already paid 20,000 for this piece of equipment. It's irrelevant. You paid it in the past. Right now, the question is, 
Do I go forward? Keep this piece of equipment and go forward. So what you paid in the past is called a sunk cost. And a sunk cost is a historical cost and it never ever comes into your decision because it cannot affect, it shouldn't affect your decision. A sunk cost is a cost that cannot be changed by any present or future decision. We are focusing on future cash flows. Depreciation is not even a cash flow. What you paid for that piece of equipment in the past is a historical cash flow. It's not a future cash flow. So that is completely irrelevant. However, if I can trade in, if I can exchange this piece of equipment to get the new equipment, I get what's called a trade-in allowance. Or if I dispose of this equipment and somebody pays me for, then I get cash. Both those situations, there is future cash. So they're relevant. So let's look, go look at a decision. Okay, assume that Jeff Coke Company has a factory machine with a book value of 40,000 and remaining use for life for four years. Completely irrelevant. History, ignore it. Focus on future. The new cash, the new machine is available that cost 120. That is future. And is expected to have zero salvage value, but it's important here that it also has the same useful life of four years. That's important. If the new machine is acquired, the variable manufacturing costs are expected to decrease from 160 down to 125 annually. And the old piece of equipment is scrapped. What's the incremental analysis? Now, the question here is, do I retain this equipment for the next four years or replace it for a new piece of equipment that I will use for the next four years. That four years is very important. Why? Because the savings are 160, or the, I mean, the cost, the operating cost, 160 per year, if I retain the variable operating cost, and it's 120 if I exchange that equipment, okay? I'm sorry, 125 if I exchange that equipment. The new cost, if I retain, there's no cost for new, but if I replace, there's a cost of 120. And when you look at it, if I retain this piece of equipment over the next four years, it's 640,000. But if I replace it, it's uh, 620,000. So there's an incremental difference here of 20,000. Okay. And it's in the benefit of replace the equipment. Option A, option B. Option A is stay the way I am. Option B, replace the equipment. Any questions? Now, be sure you understand what some costs are. In this case, it would be the company's advantage to replace the equipment. The lower variable costs due to the re Depreci replacement more than offset the cost of the new piece of equipment. The sunk cost is irrelevant. Book value does not affect the decision. All right. Lastly, we're going to look at whether to keep a unprofitable segment or to eliminate it. Now, this is a decision of senior management. Now, in deciding whether to eliminate an unprofitable management should choose the alternative of the highest net income, of course. That's what we always do. Often fixed costs are allocated. You know what allocated means, and we always are beware of allocated costs in management because they're simply an estimate, usually done by the accountant, and it's because they're indirect costs, so they're allocated. So 
You understand the difference between a direct cost and indirect. An indirect cost is allocated to all segments to absorb it. It is possible, therefore, for the net income to decrease. Now let's look at an example here. Okay, we have, assume Martina Navatilova, I don't know if you remember her, company produces tennis rackets, three models, Pro, Master, and Champ. Pro and Master are profitable lines, whereas Champ is unprofitable. How did they determine that? Well, let's, let's go through it. Sales, yeah, of course, sales is cash in. 800,000 for pro, 300, yeah, that's accurate, and 100,000 champ. Those, those costs are directly related to those three products. So 1,200,000 in sales. Variable costs, yeah, yeah, they're directly related to pro, variable uh, selling costs and what have you, uh, cost of goods sold, selling in a mint, yeah. 210 to master, yeah, yeah, that's master's, and 90 to champ, yeah. So now the contribution margin, pro has 280, master has 90, and champ has 10. So it's 300. But now we have to cover the fixed costs, but the fixed costs, remember, are common to all three. Remember our sales mix? We said fixed costs are common to all three. So therefore, the accountant takes the 160,000 and probably weights it by selling price. So these guys have most of the revenue, so they're going to get most of the fixed cost, 80,000. They're getting half of the fixed cost, but they're more than half of the revenue. And Masters is getting 50,000 by some formula. They're allocating that 160 allocating, estimating, cutting it up and dividing it among these three. And they give 30 to Champ, and they give 30 to Champ, and Champ now looks like it's not profitable. So do I get rid of Champ? Because Pro has given me 200. Master's given me 40 if I just look at the bottom line. But Champ is chewing up 20 of that. If I get rid of Champ, my profit should go from 220 to 240, makes sense. So let's get rid of CHAMP. So we get rid of CHAMP. What happens? Well, you see that 100, we still have the same sales, variable cost, contribution margin for pro and master. We no longer have the contribution margin for CHAMP because we eliminated it. And the 160 fixed cost is now divided between pro and master. And therefore, pro's profit goes down, master's, the whole total profit goes down from 220 to 210. Why? Because we got rid of champ. And notice that champ had a contribution margin of 10. And there's where you focus, the contribution margin, not the profit so much. The focus, you get rid of CHAMP, you lose a contribution margin to fixed cost of 10,000. And you know what that happens? That means that your profits are gonna go down 10,000 because you don't have that contribution. And that's exactly what has happened here. So, you focus on contribution. You've known all these things. We've taken them in CVP analysis. That's what you focus on. Okay. And it would be a bad decision to eliminate CHAMP. What would happen? You've lost that contribution margin. So if you continue the way they are, the sales for CHAMP were this, and you eliminate, and you're going to eliminate that 20,000, you lose the contribution. And that's it. Let's see how we do with the lucky seven people who are participating in this one. Book value is considered to be, we must get that.
No, 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 no. It's not a cost that can be changed. It is a sunk cost. It's not relevant because it's historical. The only thing relevant is future cash inflows. It's not the net cost of the new equipment. It is not the annual operating costs. It is depreciation. Depreciation is history and depreciation is not even a cost. It's an estimate of how much I've used up of the equipment.